Hello, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Project Bidoof. This time we are making a battle ready Empoleon. I've chosen to go for a special attacking moveset, well, the leading special based moveset. So we have our stealth rocks at the very bottom. Then we have our scold as our same type attack bonus move. And then for other TMs, we have grass knot and ice beam. For EVs, we are going maximum HP, maximum special attack, and we are taking the modest nature. For items, I have leftovers here. However, other the options include a sugar berry. This halves the damage taken from a ground type move. As we are part steel, this will do super effective damage to us. What we're really looking to do here is tank earthquake, for example, from a Garchomp or a Dragonite, or just, you know, something that we can hit super effective with an ice beam. So the objective with a sugar berry is to tank that hit, return our own hit, a counter attack, and deal super effective damage. The same can be said for Wakan berry as a defensive berry, as we are part water type. So we can just have some defense from the electric typing. However, I just think if you're going to pick a super effective berry, sugar berry seems to have more beneficial use cases. Or you could just stick with leftovers. You could also just go a focus, uh, not a focus band, a focus sash. This gives you that extra degree of safety in case your turn one or whichever turn you come in with your Empoleon to use stealth rocks. You might get hit by a really strong earthquake from Mama Swine or some of these other users and it would normally knock you out at that point. So I would say run Shookerberry, Leftovers, then Focus Sash, then Wakanberry. In my priority list, I would probably just say, hey, let's just grab a Shookerberry and call it a day. All of our moves can be taught via a TM. So this is a pretty simple breeding process. However, for those of you who have noticed that the ability is Torrent and you might think, hey, Empoleon has Defiant as a hidden ability, I have actually prepared an additional moveset as some food for thought for all of you experimental breeders. Let's say that you wanted to make a trick room team. I will make some videos on this very soon, so don't worry too much. There will be content coming just to include more people in the discussion and to teach some of you guys how to breed these trick room specific Pokemon. We have a brave nature that's plus attack minus speed, a zero IV. So this is the worst possible speed IV. And then for our moveset, we have a sword stance. We have dual stab moves, even though steel wing is 90% accurate. I think it's still worth taking waterfall and earthquake. You could also take, let's just type in physical. We can just search for other physical moves here. We have aqua jet. If you want some priority, in Trick Room, we're typically going to go first unless the Pokemon is really slow, but you could take Avalanche as your fourth move. You could take Brick Break, Drill Peck, Earthquake, Facade, Rock Slide, Shadow Claw, and then just some general moves that aren't as good. However, just for coverage's sake, I do want to put Earthquake. What's it doing? And there you have it. You have a defiant hidden ability, physical attacking trick room Empoleon, just for you guys who want to breed something a little bit different. Let's just quickly go over some of the Smogon movesets that have been used throughout different metagames. This is the Diamond and Pearl, so Generation 4 metagame. We have a lead moveset, which is kind of similar to the one that we have, except instead of Hydro Pump, we are using Scold. So we have Grass Knot, Stealth Rocks, and Ice Beam. You can see in here, third and fourth move are basically what you want, what your choice is. Some people take Knock Off. If you can learn knockoff, then maybe you just want that extra utility. Removing items off of your opponent's Pokemon is pretty big and it's very useful. We have an agility setup for those of you who like to sweep stuff. Agility makes it so that you raise your speed stat by two. So this can really help it get into those speed tier fights that I've discussed in some previous videos. It's quite important for things like Garchomp, you know, your Dragonites, your Mamoswines stuff like that. It makes you more competitive as a sweeper in the late game. We have our specially defensive, which is pretty standard. I think you just take a water type, you take raw stealth rocks. I think protect is more in slower meta games where you try and scout whether they have earthquake. Again, this is generation four. So there's a lot more move choices these days, but just keep in mind that especially defensive Empoleon does work quite well because of the innate 101 special defense. It's pretty high. We have a choice specs move set. I actually really like this. This is a cool idea. However, Again, Empoleon isn't the fastest and choice specs users are typically kind of fast or very fast. You really want to just take advantage of the speed ties or the speed wars and just hit stuff really hard. It's not bad, but yeah, the speed is definitely lacking, but it is more durable than some of those faster Pokemon. If we look at the BDSP OU moveset, you can see that they have a Scold, Ice Beam, Defog or Stealth Rocks and Roar. So this is pretty much just a utility focused lead Pokemon controlling all the entry hazards 
trying to stop any potential sweeping Pokemon. They take a HP and special defense distribution for their EVs, and they also take some special attacks, but a lot of the BDSP OU pages aren't properly documented. They don't have a very in-depth discussion as to why they have 60 special attack EVs here. This could be for a specific interaction or damage calculation, but again, I wouldn't just go to the most recent metagame and copy that moveset without at least experimenting a little bit and finding out why you should take those moves or those EVs, those items. It's worth going through just different metagames and seeing what has worked in the past, what are its threats, what are its counters, what does it do best, etc. The breeding process is super simple for our Empoleon because of the 4TM moveset. We need our 6 IV Bidoof, it doesn't need to be 6 IV. Technically, you could just have a 5 IV without attack, and we have a female Piplup. Of course, breeding for starter Pokemon can be a little bit annoying. They are typically 25% females, so you'll be hatching quite a few eggs just to breed up your IVs to get a better female and then replace that in the daycare. Eventually, you will have a 5 IV Empoleon. It is a modest nature. It is maximum special attack and speed EVs. You should check out the other videos in this series or my EV training video if you want to know the precise locations, as I don't want to keep going over it in every video. It kind of bloats the videos up a little bit. However, just for reference, you can train special attack with Ghastlies in the old chateau in the Eterna Forest, and you can train speed EVs at the fishing platform to the west of Eterna City. There is a magic up man that you can use the Versus Seeker. After that, we just finish our moveset. We teach Ice Beam, Grass Knot, Scold, and Stealth Rock by TM, and then you have your battle ready Empoleon. So that's a very short, very simple breeding process without too many hitches, and you have a pretty cool Pokemon. I always liked Empoleon, but I wish it had a different second typing, I think that it just doesn't have as much of a leg up as let's say Infernape does, and it doesn't have the best matchups against Torterra either, but that's just my opinion. I think it's pretty cool, it has a few uses, you could find some use for it I'm sure, and you could also have a lot of fun with it. But yeah, that is going to be it for this video, make sure to check out the other videos in the series, check us out on Discord, check out my Twitter giveaways for every Pokemon in this series, there will be a pinned tweet, scroll down, retweet any of the Pokemon that you want to win, I will do a raffle once this series concludes on the 24th of July, leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm, all of that stuff really helps me out and I always read and answer your questions. With that said, it is Monday today so I hope you all have a very nice week ahead and stay tuned for more Project Bidoof every single day of July at 6pm BST. Bye for now!